I work with a small molecule called GABA. GABA is a signal molecule both in the brain and in the pancreas. And in the brain, I look at what insulin can do in terms of making the GABA signaling more effective. But in the pancreas, I study how GABA affects the, the secretion of insulin and glucagon. What we would like to understand is how, what is the mechanism of GABA modulating the processes it's involved in. And it works through an ion channel that's called the GABA-A receptor. And that is the major challenge. How can we understand how this activation of these receptors modifies the processes that take place in the cell? Normally, it takes quite a long to have a breakthrough because you have to put a lot of things together. And one thing with the GABA research is that we thought that there were just high concentrations of GABA were important, so everything else was ignored. But then once when we had done a lot of experiments and could put them all together, and then we looked on the day at the data, on the data uh, on the computer, we saw these curves, and these curves proved that very low nanomolar concentrations of GABA are very effective both in the brain and in the pancreas. Our short-term goals are really to try to explain how drugs that are used in the clinic work at these receptors. And I think we could be able to do that within the next three years to test both the works, both the, how these drugs in the clinic work, but maybe some are also some other molecules that are floating around in the, in the uh, body, like GLP-1 and these hormones, how they affect the signaling system. We would like to be able to describe and understand how extracellular GABA signaling works in the pancreas and in the brain, and how it affects hormonal secretion and neuronal excitability, and how we can use this information to create new, more specific drugs to be used in, for example, diabetes, but both type 2 and type 1 diabetes. And we think it's possible that GABA may even be very important to preserve the beta cells in type 1 diabetes. And maybe we can then even hinder the onset of type 1 diabetes. Well, doing science is a lot of fun. That is, we are having fun most of the time. So I think that, that is really the, the driving force. You like going to work. You go home on weekends, but you still keep thinking about what was I doing in the lab? How can I make the experiment nicer? And then on Monday, you are you're not saying, oh, it's Monday, but yes, it's Monday. And it's really true.